Does GPS prove the impossible? The engineers and technologists who study relativity frequently claim that GPS is verification or proof of Einstein's surrealistic concept of time dilation. But when we blast a clock into high altitude and accelerate it around the planet in orbit, is it time that is being stretched and pulled upon? Or is it merely the clock? Let's see what the experts have to say. General relativity predicts that time will appear to run slower under stronger gravitational pull. The clocks on board the satellites will therefore seem to run faster than a clock on Earth. Furthermore, special relativity predicts that because the satellite clocks are moving relative to a clock on Earth, they will appear to run slower. The whole GPS network has to make allowances for these effects. Proof that relativity has a real impact. The explanation Wikipedia provides for these effects is thus. Time dilation is an actual difference of elapsed time between two events, as measured by observers, either moving relative to each other or differently situated from gravitational masses. An accurate clock at rest with respect to one observer may be measured to tick at a different rate when compared to a second observer's own equally accurate clocks. This effect arises neither from technical aspects of the clocks, nor from the fact that signals need time to propagate, but from the nature of space-time itself. I highlighted two phrases in this explanation because these two lines contradict each other. Is there an actual difference in elapsed time? Or is it that the ticks of the clocks you've counted are different? Yet somehow they know that it is not a technical aspect of the clocks. This is double talk, and only serves to confuse the issue. Let's analyze these statements further. General relativity predicts that time will appear to run slower under stronger gravitational pull. In reality, however, it is not time that is being counted. It is the ticks of clocks. All that this proves is that clocks slow down under certain conditions. So it is not time that runs slower under greater gravitational pull. The only real thing running and slowing down here is the clock. This could be rationally explained as a physical effect caused by greater resistance to motion resulting from gravity. Kind of like an old lady who has fallen and can't get up. The greater the pull of gravity, the harder it is for anything to move. But don't forget this statement. Furthermore, special relativity predicts that because the satellite's clocks are moving relative to a clock on Earth, they will appear to run slower. Notice here how they've switched from time running slower to the clock running slower. This is a crucial conceptual difference. But perhaps this is caused by the constant push and pull on the clock occurring when accelerating in an orbit. Sort of like how you feel when you're on a merry-go-round. You feel a constant tug yanking you outwards. And this tug could be why the clock in orbit ends up running slower. But even going through and explaining all of this seems ridiculous to me anyway. How have we gotten to the point in science where physicists claim that abstract concepts such as time and space are warping, stretching, and dilating, when these abstract concepts have no shape or location in reality? How do we physically stretch an abstract concept? In physics, we have to take statements at face value, literally. There is nothing existing in reality called time which can be literally stretched and dilated like bubblegum or an eye pupil. This is, at best, a confusing metaphor being passed off as a physical explanation for why clocks run slower under certain conditions. Why do they do this? Well, I don't know. Maybe to open the door for science fiction nerds to gobble up these ideas and use them as proof? that their beloved Doctor Who-like time travel fantasies are really possible? 
I guess there's just more religionists left in the world than there are rational thinkers. But, if you can think rationally, and you'd like to discuss these ideas further, come join the Rational Scientific Method group on Facebook, where you'll find me and other scientists waiting to discuss these problems with you. Thanks for watching.